Yes, and this is the Checkpoints, hosted and co-hosted by Elena Kvanchilashvili and myself. I'm Georgi Sakaze. This is the first show of 2021. The Checkpoints is back to tell you more about businesses and economics. The day and the time is unchanged. We meet at 10 p.m. every Sunday and try to bring local and global perspective to the table. Yes, and uh, let us start um, locally. And uh, for sure, undoubtedly, the main development is Pizina Ivanishvili's uh, departure from politics. This is the second time that Ivanishvili is leaving the official post, but unlike the previous departure, now Ivanishvili's uh, firm position is that he will not be returning to the political arena. The only thing we can say here is, well, time will show. At this point, he has left us uh, with a quite uh, long letter and two interviews, one for the magazine and another one for public broadcaster. We have to say that not much emphasis was on the economy, either on his letter or in the interviews that I just mentioned. Uh, what we can digest for you shortly here is just some points. Um, this was the first big news that we got to know this week about Bizina Ivanishvili's future plans. Namely, he transferred a significant part of his business and real estate assets in Georgia, which he owns through offshore companies to the Cartu Charitable Foundation. Changes in the public registers were fixed on the last days of December 2020. Um, yes, Georgi, and the biggest change was on December 31 uh, when the Tourism Development Fund, which owns the facilities under construction of Panorama Tbilisi and Paragraph Shekwatili, uh, was uh, transferred to the um, Kartu Fund. Prior to the change, 100% of these companies were owned by Panamian Frankston International SA. The volume of the authorized capital of the company, according to the financial statements for 2018, was uh, 580 million Georgian lari. Just to remind our viewers, the Tourism Development Fund includes Tabori Resort, Sololaki Hills, a hotel project under construction in Ganmukhuri, as well as real estate in Chakvi and Abastumani. Thanks for the comment, Elena. Absolutely right. And the change of ownership did not affect the projects managed by the co-investment fund. Uh, hence, Axis Towers, Galeria Tbilisi, and the owner of the hydropower plants under construction are unchanged. Later, uh, Bidina Ivanishvili explained his decision in the interview with entrepreneurs stating uh, that he had already stated his intention to spend not less than 90% of his property on charity and public affairs. However, this statement did not receive a proper response from the media and the public. I made the decision long time ago, in fact, this is a logical continuation of my decision, Ivanishvili noted in his last. Uh, but on the other hand, um, Georgi, we saw um, clearly that Bidzina Ivanishvili had um, high hopes for higher profits in Georgia. Well, uh, since you mentioned that, yes, Bidzina Ivanishvili said he was dissatisfied with his business profitability in Georgia. As Ivanishvili noted himself, a number of his companies are still unprofitable. And to him, it would be better, much better for the business to show a higher profit margin. It would be better, of course, if Cartu Bank attracted more investments. But unfortunately, we could not do that. So I cannot be satisfied with the results and figures. It seems I could not pay proper attention to the businesses, especially after coming into politics, he said. However, to Ivanishvili, this is not the only reason why profits were not high. He said uh, another reason uh, for the inefficiency of his business companies uh, might have also been the fact that he had never used his access financial resources to create barriers for other businesses on the market and thus behind the proper competition. I always wanted to help the market and make the environment as healthy as possible. Ivanishvili said in his interview, therefore for me, profits have never been the only goal. I had a sincere desire to help the country and I choose to do business not only to gain profits, but to help the country in the sectors it needed the most. 
And uh, um, he also um, said Georgia was still a poor country, but he would not take an allegation that it was the reason of GD rule, right? Right, and uh, right in poverty, poverty, uh, we have to say that uh, uh, definitely uh, his rare focus in terms of the economy and these developments um, were poor. Figures show that our economy is 10 times behind Europe, Europe and European standards. Former chairman of ruling party, Georgian Dream, Mr. Ivanishvili said in an interview with the Georgian public broadcaster, according to him, the country's economy should be developed by improving the education system and investing significant resources in the sector. We are poor. Losers enter politics, mostly those who have achieved nothing. They think doing politics is the easiest. We do not have professionals in any field and, and this is our biggest tragedy. We managed to take a big step towards reforming the education system. Spending more on education is a precondition for the dignified future. We're poor, it is easy to count the economy in figures. We are 10 times behind Europe. A lot of time and effort is needed to grow the economy even by 5-10%, Ivanishvili said. On the other hand, he believes that the Georgian Dream government managed to stop downfall in the country. We have managed to stop downfall in the country for eight years. Today we have fundamentally better situation in all directions. Well, now they say, look, look how many people live in poverty. I know that it's clear you cannot overcome it in five minutes. It needs time. Ivanishvili mentioned to him, Georgian Dream has shown how the European healthy government can work, serving its people. Many would oppose, but today we stop here. But uh, we will be in fact um, checking his last words before the final depar uh, departure from um, uh, politics, um, as he claims. Uh, now, Georgi, Bidzina Ivanishvili also touched upon Forbes um, and its um, calculations of his fortune, uh, stating that he stopped cooperating with this magazine long ago and, it ha and that he has no idea where the figures um, come from. My personal attitude as the executive editor of Forbes Georgia was Mr. Ivanishvili, <laughs> come on, <laughs> sincerely. Yeah, you are the chief editor with very good connections with editors of Forbes Russia, by the way. Um, so um, the checkpoints give you the floor for our answer <laughs> um, to the to me totally ungrounded allegation since the methodology as transparent as it can be when it comes to counting. I, I knew, I knew uh, you would make uh, me respond to this uh, quote from this platform as well. The problem now, always ready when it concerns Forbes. Uh, ungrounded or not, Bidzina Ivanishvili had always uh, had a chance to approach Forbes for changes in his fortune. Uh, so the very first question that pops in mind is, why didn't he do that? If he did, why didn't he follow up on that? But it's worth to mention, yeah, it's worth to mention that it is not us to whom he should approach for changes or update regarding his wealth, or as you have absolutely correctly mentioned, his fortune. It should be the same group with whom, as Mr. Ivanishvili mentioned in his interview, he was collaborating in 2005, and it seems to me that it should be the team of Forbes Russia. As for us, uh, I really enjoy the attitude coming uh, from the wealthiest person of Georgia and former politician Bizina Ivanishvili and Forbes Georgia team together with uh, BMG will continue doing our job, delivering and producing the highest quality news about business and economy in Georgia and worldwide. As Forbes, we are presented in 37 countries worldwide. And Mr. Ivanishvili is not the first, and trust me, not the last one who has some complaints about Forbes and rankings, which is uh, like uh, Forbes itself is a century and five years old almost. And for sure, we will exist another hundred years as the most influential business edition worldwide. 
Thank you for responding on behalf of uh, Forbes um, Georgia. And my last question to you on this. Uh, Bidzina Ivanishvili said he's um, retaining just 200 million uh, as a personal um, fortune. Yes, we are good at counting money. Does this figure seem realistic, personally, to you? As for me, and so far, my answer is no. My answer is, while all the assets, or at least majority, of assets are allocated and diverted to the charity foundation where he and his family members are represented as the sole beneficiaries. This will, not, this will not change the calculation of the assets and it was done as it was done previously. And we should not forget also that we are talking only about Georgian assets mm -hmm and uh, owned by Mr. Renuanishvili and his family. And we do not have much information about the rest allocated abroad, worldwide, or might be invested in various directions uh, through the international banks or investment funds. So, me personally, I do not expect dramatic changes in his wealthy calculations and positioning within Forbes ranks, as you have mentioned in his personal fortune in figures. We are BMG. Follow and subscribe for business and economics news.